universe of The Outer Worlds has a certain dichotomy to it. It's present in the character design, the narrative structures, and I think maybe predominantly in the art design. From the rolling hills of Monarch to the kind of desolate glamour of Byzantium, I'm here today speaking with Terry Hess, the lead environment artist for The Outer Worlds. Thank you, Terry, for taking the time to chat. Andy, thanks for having me. So at the very beginning of The Outer Worlds, going way back when this project was first introduced, do you remember some of the original design, art design philosophies or some of the simple phrases that were kind of used and pitched when trying to inform the look of this world? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we spent quite a bit of time trying to... Um, you know, figure out what exactly this this look was going to be. And it started pretty simply, actually. We were in a conference room, and we actually just wrote words down on a whiteboard. And some of those uh, words that we tried to use to capture the, uh, the feel of what the world would be uh, were going to be industrial or, or heavy or, um, you know, grungy. Mm -hmm. um, but there were a lot of counter uh, phrases that we that we used that we didn't want it to world. We we wanted it industrial and heavy, but we didn't want it to be steampunk, and we mm -hmm. wanted it to be grimy and dirty, but we didn't want it to be rusty. So um, we went back and forth for quite some time trying to figure out um, exactly the, the the look that we were going for on on the game. So that took quite remember, a, sorry, go ahead. No, it took, it took, took quite a bit of time. Uh, mm -hmm. I would say a good two to three months going round and round till we finally landed on something that uh, that everyone agreed with. Was there kind of because you mentioned words on a, a whiteboard, was there kind of a phrase or a, a, a simple philosophy that you ultimately all kind of landed on when it came to the look? Uh, we ended up with um, kind of more of an art style that's uh, a transitionary art style. Um, so you have uh, Art Nouveau is kind of where we ended up with, particularly for the Byzantium areas. Um, you know, but it, Art Nouveau is a very transition area, you know, between Victorian and um, Art Deco. Um, so it was really a challenge to find a lot of good reference uh, and how to make something that you know existed in the early 1900s um, seem like it's in, you know in the future you know or sometime in the you know uh, time ahead. So mm -hmm. uh, that was a bit of challenge, and so I was trying to figure out you know uh, how do we make these Art Nouveau uh, styles you know very natural looking flowy um, lines. Uh, and try and make them utility. Like um, we try and incorporate those designs into the shape shape of pipes, for example. So instead of just having, you know, straight pipe work like we you know we do now, um, you know, they would add flourishes and curves that almost were on the decorative side and a little less utility. Uh, but that's kind of really helped uh, the overall look you know, establishing the overall look for the outer worlds. And I think maybe most importantly for me as a player, when you see worlds that are crafted this way, it really does translate to certain um, narrative values. When you see things that are created with a utility that is almost secondary to the aesthetic. I, I think about this world and everything is about that aesthetic. It, it kind of has that dichotomy that I talked about at the very beginning of a very flashy world that's actually dying, kind of not working and, and bursting at the seams at uh, you know every encounter. I think of Byzantium as a great example of that, where you when you first see it versus when you actually start to play in Byzantium, you see that things are, are breaking down. It's not really as glamorous as it seems. When designing the world, how were you able to use art in order to tell that sort of story? Because I think it was maybe the most impactful way to get that sense. Oh, thanks. Yeah, the um, the best way we tried to think of Byzantium was uh, it was more of a facade. You know, it mm -hmm. was a, uh, you know, just kind of a silver lining over, um, you know, kind of the uh, the cruddy core of a city. You know, they tried to polish, 
you know, something that was, you know, kind of decrepit, falling apart, deteriorating, um, but kind of doing uh, pretty band-aid fixes on top to try and, mm -hmm. you know, mask the uh, fact that, uh, you know, society is failing. And, uh, you know, to give the facade of, hey, everything's great, you want to be here, when, you know, in essence, everything is really falling apart. Uh, so you can see that in some areas where, you know, the walls have crumbled and you see this really industrial substructure. It's not this nice, fine, polished marble and, um, you know, nice gold and metal, um, you know, that you see around the rest of the world. You can really see moments of, yeah, they're trying to cover something up here. Um, mm. And that, that's what we tried to do or try to... Uh, you know, visually get across, uh, particularly in Byzantium. When developing these worlds and, and this general conceit of, you know, that that facade, were terms like uh, Gilded Age and, and kind of late capitalism wrought brought into the uh, design choices? Was that something that was there? Because I know the game obviously speaks to that, but I think does it in kind of an indirect way. And I was wondering if maybe the art direction was uh, one of the ways to speak to those sort of values. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, Gilded Age came up quite a bit. Um, and it's, again, that's one of those transitionary periods we're kind of, you know, talking about that, uh, you know, didn't have a, a long staying period, you know, period, but, you know, the challenge again was Gilded Age, but not steampunk, you know, how do you, mm -hmm. you know, how do you achieve that? And that's, uh, that was a, a pretty good struggle that we had artistically, um, you know, not just for the environments, but for character design and um, even down to the uh, logos and the splash screens and the, all the advertising that happened, that all, um, you know, had to be taken into account uh, to try and just create a pretty consistent, you know, balance throughout, you know, the entire design. I do think that when we, we talk about the art direction of the game, there are some instances where that dichotomy uh, shifts in a pretty big way. And I think Monarch is a great example where you have a world where you really get a chance to be more creative with the, uh, you know, um, monster design with the colors of the world in creating the art of Monarch. What was, again, that line between making it look like it has utility and making everything so colorful and, and kind of extravagant and almost ostentatious in some ways? Um, well, that was a, um, uh, thankfully Monarch actually was the level that, um, particularly that I spent the most time in. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm, I'm pretty, intimately involved with that, with that process on that planet in particular. Um, it was, I think what helped is that we got the backstory first, kind mm -hmm. of what was happening, what the stage of, uh, you know, the planet's failed terraforming was. Um, so we got a really nice, from the narrative team, we got a fantastic story base to build on artistically. So we had a, you know, a pretty good palette and a great idea of, um, you know, where we should want to head. Um, so then from there, we were able to just, you know, we started with Stellar Bay. Uh, we figure, okay, this is going to be the most put together of all the areas. And, um, you know, so we'd build that up to where, where it needed to be. And then we branched out from there. Then, you know, we'd go to the, uh, the Stellar Bay ruins and it's like, okay, well, what happened here? Oh, the monsters and the creatures of, uh, of Monarch, um, have taken over, um, you know, these areas. Okay. Well, uh, since nobody's living here now, what would these buildings look like? Okay. Well, they're going to be, you know, at different levels of decay and deterioration and, uh, you know, wear and tear. Um, and that's kind of how we approach it. And then you, you know, continue down and, you know, you'll run into Fallbrook and then, you know, we've got just really nice narrative there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just good backstory as to what's exactly happening. So you're able to work really closely with uh, narrative and design to um, establish what uh, visually, what type of storytelling needs to happen in each of these areas. It's really fun to look at 
the larger planets and the larger worlds that did have ruins or were uh, perhaps didn't have people in it and see the kind of vignettes, the mini narratives that you were able to create with, I imagine, kind of holistically with everyone on the team uh, in each room. Can you speak to that just a little bit? The idea of using the, a, a specific placed object, a, a look on a wall, something like that to tell a story of, oh, and this, you know, something really horrible happened in this town, in this one room, in this little area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, visual storytelling is something we try to get in as often as possible. Um, a really great example uh, is going to be towards the end of the game uh, when you're on Tartarus. Mm -hmm. There's, um, uh, I think it's an alternative um, pathway, but you can see if you if you take this alternative path, um, you start to head down a hallway, and there's a great uh, storytelling moment where the chairman, um, basically, you can see he was trying to turn Tartarus into the next Byzantium, and he's got all these nice polished walls and uh, you know marble flooring and all of that. But you walk right past a section uh, with the work cart, and you can see like them you know putting up the walls and putting up the um uh, the marble and mm -hmm. the fancy lights and all of that but you can, it's a great moment of seeing oh well here's that facade that i was talking about a little bit earlier in an actual visual storytelling form of you know the workers were just here and just putting all of this together so um you know it's moments like that that we try to you know, try and capture as, uh, you know, as often as we could. Specifically in Tartarus, I'm thinking about the very final moments of the game that's currently playable right now. When you enter what you talked about there, the perhaps the most ornate area in the game is the final place that you are. Uh, the choice is to have that as beautiful and as kind of the best of the best. Do you remember that being, uh, you know, an, an intentional choice or, or something that was, I, I just, I would love to know about what it came to creating that last moment in the game, the look of it. No, that was absolutely a, um, it was absolutely a choice. Um, myself and uh, Daniel Alpert, the art director on the project, um, because I worked on that last room with, uh, you know, where the chairman was. And that was a, uh, a conscious thought of, well, he's spending time here. He's taken over this prison. Um, and his intent is really to turn this into the next Byzantium because, you know, he, he realized that, okay, well, Byzantium is deteriorating and, and eventually will, you know, fall at some time. So he wanted to build a new utopia you know, here. So he figured, well, I'm going to start here at the, mm -hmm. you know, his headquarters or his main office. And that's kind of that moment I was telling you about is like he was going there and then working his way all back through the prison to, you know, put a, you know, put a facelift on everything there. Um, but yeah, absolutely. That was a, um, a choice because it was a very neat, um, you know, moment where you go from a very, uh, industrial, um, mm -hmm. a little bit minimalist with, you know, with the prison to the, you know, to the contrast of the fine marble and, uh, the nice light fixtures and, the you know, even the, uh, the topiary and, you know, and the plants on the walls and all of that. Uh, mm -hmm. so it was, uh, just creating that, that contrast that really made it, you know, interesting of walking through an industrial area. And then all of a sudden, wait, I'm in this nice polished, and there's greenery and there's, you know, we get a, a beautiful, you know, atrium ceiling where we can see the, you know, the clouds and the lightning and everything happening. So it was um, uh, an attempt to build that, um, you know, contrast. Hey, something's coming. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we tried to, uh, mm -hmm. you know, kind of, uh, you know, build that transition, you know, and, you know, get some anticipation and some buildup of, Hey, something's going on here. The same thing kind of happens in uh, early retirement um, mm -hmm. in Byzantium as well. You've got that beautiful foyer there with, uh, you know, the ponds and, and the, the water fixtures and hey, everything's going to be great. You've won. You've got early retirement. And then you go into this beautiful, 
you know, uh, elevator. And then as it starts to go down, you notice something's not right because mm -hmm. that beautiful facade has, has gone away and you know, something is, uh, something is wrong. So we Something's tried to, yeah, yeah. So we tried to, um, you know, visually tell that as often as we could. Big thanks again, Terry Hass, lead environment artist on The Outer Worlds, talking more about visual storytelling, how to create the, the really signature look, I think. It's it's quite unique, in the, especially in the world of video games that we've seen in The Outer Worlds. There is a DLC upcoming, of course. There is the obligatory, have you created any alien spaceships that you've made <laughs> for The Outer Worlds? No, I did not do any, um, any work on any spaceships. Uh, um, <laughs> no, I was uh, primarily rocks and trees and um, and cities and alien plants and mm -hmm. and all that good stuff. Uh, like I say, mostly a monarch there. So, yeah, that's that's my not so uh, unobvious way of trying to figure out if the new DLC is about aliens. So I appreciate your answer. Thank you again, Amanda Burkowski for VGS. <laughs>